Good morning, Flosstube. My name is Laura, and I'd like to welcome you to Stitching by the Shore, my channel all about cross-stitch with a little bit of paper crafting thrown in, too. Uh, we do have, I was going to say it's all cross-stitch, but I have a teeny tiny little bit of paper crafting in regards to a full finish that you will see. So that'll be down the road a little bit mixed in with everything else. If you are new, I want to say welcome. Thank you so much for pressing play. I hope you like what you see and uh, stick around. Tell me what you're stitching. I'd love to hear about about you and your stitching journey. And if you're a returning stitching friend, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you taking the time to continue to stitch with me and uh, talk stitching with me because I know there's so much out there. So I'm super grateful to each and every one of you. Um, <laughs> I'm it, it, The shirt's easily distracted and I feel like I'm being distracted. So I figure I'll just show you. Easily distracted by Cross Stitch and Dogs is uh, this t-shirt. Um, it is... <laughs> It is warm in here today. Um, we're in that kind of, here's a little bit of spring so that I can fake you out. And then next week, I'm going to give you freezing temperatures kind of thing. So I don't want to mess with, you know, th thermostats or anything like that. So it's a little bit warmer up here. I do have a window open, which I never do. Uh, I live in a fairly quiet neighborhood. So um, unless people start yelling and hooping it up out there, I think we'll be okay. The uh, lawn people were doing all of their stuff earlier in the week. So, cause lots of times on Friday, they seem to like to mow the lawn too. So, but I think we're all set with that. So we have lots to talk about today on the front end, all stitching, stitching, stitching. When it gets to shopping, it's minuscule. So the end of the video will be pretty quick, but we do have a lot to talk about with, um, in regards to all my stitching stuff. So let's get started. So before I, um, show you my stuff. I did want to mention a floss tuber that is new to me. She's a floss tuber book tuber. Uh, she took a big break. It looks like she has a whip parade out now um, that was recently put out this past, I would say a week ago. And um, before that, I think 11 months ago, almost a year ago was her last video. So uh, the channel is Recovering Book Hoarder. So she likes to read as well as stitch like so many other stitchers do. And so... <laughs> I'm going to blame this on old ears. I worked for 15 years. I worked in the fitness industry and we had loud music all the time. When I would teach, especially with microphones, music would be loud even without it. And so my ears are not quite the same, but I'm pretty sure she said her name was Tara. There's an off chance it could be Sarah. So I'm going to go with like a 90-10 90% it's Tara, 10% it might be Sarah. I am so sorry though. Uh, I just, like I said, I I listened to about four different videos just to make sure I could, if I could figure it out and my ears just weren't, they, they couldn't quite get it. So, but she has such a lovely, really neat variety of projects. Lots and lots of projects that I have not seen anybody else stitch. Uh, full coverages, non-full coverages, smaller pieces, bigger pieces, a variety of different designers and styles. And it's really, I'm actually not quite done with it, with her video. It's about an hour and a half long. So I've got maybe about mm, 20 minutes left. <laughs> She's looking for a project that she can't find. So I'm really kind of invested in finding out whether or not she finds it in her group of the last few uh, projects that she's going through. Um, and she is stitching, she just started, or she started recently, the um, Black Vintage Sampler. But she is doing it with colors that of her choosing. I want to say teals and purples. She has a small start, but it's already, I can tell it's going to be beautiful. And I cannot wait to follow her journey on that. She likes to pick colors, lots of purples and teals and blue, all that kind of uh, color scheme. And so it's really kind of neat. But that one, I just love all the different things that people do with that one. And no, you're not going to see that this week. You'll see it next week, actually. So you'll see mine um, with a little bit more going along, hopefully next week. But yeah, so if you want to check out Recovering Book Hoarder, I will put her, is that, I want to make sure I have, you know what, I already have it off. If, if for some reason that's not the, I'm almost sure that's the exact name, it'll be linked down below in the description box so you can check out her videos. All right, so let's go on to my projects now. I have, so... I'll preface this with Mo was traveling this week. Mo was in Connecticut. He left first thing Monday morning. He woke up at 
a very early hour this morning. He's already actually home. He drove mostly <laughs> middle of the night. But so I had lots of stitching time. So I touched 13 projects this week. So you're going to see a decent amount of projects. But I'm also using them for, I'm looking at my challenge book here, my magazine monthly acrostic, my crafts and books acrostic, as well as I have my own challenge, Stitching by the Shore, called I Spy. And there's 10 prompts that you kind of just find them in your projects and use them. It's just a fun way maybe to pick up projects that you weren't, wouldn't have picked up or just to get extra time on projects that you um, would like to get some more time on. If you're on Facebook, I do have a Facebook page, Stitching by the Shore, Laura, and um, it's in the events section. So if you go there, you can check out all the information in the events. Feel free to post in the events and show us your pictures and all that fun stuff. If you're not, that's okay. I've got you. If you look in my community tab, you will see all of the prompts. I don't have the full instructions. I believe a couple people might have asked questions. Uh, I probably talked about it more at the beginning of the month because that's when the new prompts come out. Uh, but if you have more questions, feel free. But if you would like to see what the prompts are, you can still, you can play along anytime you want, frankly. And you don't have to do all 10. You just, it's, I am very easy when it comes to these. It's just a chance to have fun with your stitching and maybe pick up a few extra projects. Um, but if you do have any questions, you know, feel free to, to reach out and I'll, I'll see if I can answer them. But I'm going to show you, there's a few that I worked on this week that are for the iSpy. I'm down to, actually there's two, I have two prompts that I didn't know, but now I do. I, I'm pretty sure what they're going to be. So I'm down to just one prompt that I still have to figure out. And it might be a repeat of something I've already done because, you know, sometimes this prompts are a little specific, right? So this one here is Long May She Wave and it's Stitching with the Housewives. Now, I really need to finish this year. This was started in the summer. Yeah, probably oh, June or July of 2020. Yep, 2020. It is not my oldest project, but it's it's getting to the point where it, it needs, it needs to get done. <laughs> so one of the prompts for I spy was something you'd see in a parade and you will see American flags uh, in a parade, at least here. Maybe if you don't live in America, but <laughs> anyway, so that's what this looks like right here. Now this is 18 count. Oh, navy blue. And it's from Garibaldi's. It's a Charles craft, which I don't stitch on a lot of Charles craft. It's very, um, solid but it's actually not too bad to stitch on uh i find it pretty easy and pretty comfortable so this sat for a long long time excuse me i have an itchy eye um and i think so i started this summer of 2020 i was still figuring out my style still evolving i had come back to cross stitch fourth quarter of 2019 so you know maybe october no september -ish, august september and I was still kind of figuring out what I liked. And I liked this pattern, but what I've realized about myself is I don't like all the extra stuff. So I had really stalled because I think it's fair to say that the housewives are known for all their extra stuff, right? And they're super cute patterns. But for me, that stresses me out <laughs> to have all of that. <laughs> so I put it away for a long, long time until I gave myself permission to say, I can just take things out. I don't have to stitch the whole pattern, right? So I had originally taken out the chicken because I don't stitch really chickens. Um, then what I did here, there was another chicken actually. So I made this flower taller. I changed these here, I added an extra flower. So all of this was kind of like that. And that's fine. I mean, I don't see the need to have anything there. And then there's a whole bunch of, I'm assuming they're bees. I'm not gonna stitch any of those. I'm not stitching the flowers here. I am, I didn't stitch the kind of the bunting here. I felt like that one flag's enough. In here, I'll stitch the flowers, but not the extra flag because it's kind of encroaching on the, on the border. So you can see there's a lot I'm changing and I actually feel really great about those changes. And I think I'm really gonna like it when it's done. So I am just plugging along. I will most likely try to find it prompts for this one every single month because that's kind of like that little kick uh, in order to, you know, pull it out rather than saying, oh, I want to stitch on something else instead, because I would like to see this one finished by the summer at some point this, this summer. We'll see. I'm trying to think. I think a lot of what I did 
I finished all the way over here. So this border is done down here. I messed up somewhere on here on the flowers, but I kind of fudged it and it'll be fine. I think you're not going to notice. And then I started a lot with the uh, fence. I guess I'd call it a fence, right? So there's a fence here and then all the flowers there. The other thing with the flowers, if you'll see, I don't know if you can see, these blue ones are striped. I'm actually going to fill them in and not have the stripes. And, you know, because I don't want to, I mean, technically I have navy fabric. I could probably get away with not doing it at all. But now that would look plain. Um, but I think I'd like to fill in with the blues and just have it kind of like full flowers instead of stripes. So... So that's where that one is. I don't know if you'll see it again. I, I, for my, for myself, I've pretty much said for I Spy, whoever participates, do what you want. You know what I mean? Whatever your goal is, that's your, that's between you and and your stitching. Um, for me, I'm trying to do 200 stitches on a piece, and that's then I'll call the goal of finished. Maybe I'll change that at some point. Maybe I'll up it to say 250 or something or other along the way if I want to see a bit more done on the projects that I pull out for that. We'll see. Nothing's really ever set in stone with me. <laughs> we just take it as it comes. The next one I'm going to show you is Summer Quaker. These are, when I show you my projects, they're loosely in, they're not in any specific order. And very often I stitch projects multiple days. So it may not just see one day's worth of work. So then where do I show it and all that? So this is Leela's studio. I'm sure many of you are very familiar. I happen to see, um, uh, Mary sent me a picture on Instagram. She, and I follow Leela Studio, but I must have missed that. Yeah, you know, Instagram, Facebook, they're, they don't, nothing is actually in order for feeds, but um, Leela Studio, they are currently stitching the winter Quaker. So you know, you know that that means that I am going to be doing that at some time in the future, <laughs> but not anytime soon yet. I do want to finish spring and or summer before I start the autumn and then, you know, continue that way. Or maybe by the time I'm ready to start one, it's winter and I start the winter one. Who knows? Now, I do have a hashtag on this one. I started this along with Beth, the Steadfast Stitcher, and I'm pretty sure I already have Beth's. Oh, I don't. I am surprised I don't have Beth on my notes to link. Um, Beth, the Steadfast Stitcher. Uh, we started this last the first day of summer last year. So I think I'm coming along pretty good here. I still have another whole season before we get to that day. Uh, hashtag is summer by the shore SAL, summer by the shore SAL. So if you are stitching it, feel free to, I know that every single person says this on the videos now. I know the hashtags don't really work, but sometimes you get to see things. So here I am, that's where it is. And yeah, I'm really pleased. I'm not purposely going all the way around and not doing the inside. I'm, so that's it in total. 18 count Nantucket Sky Fabrics by Stephanie. I I have been on this side for a while. I still, still have to fill in some of the crab stuff here. I don't know. I just keep going back and forth with that one. It's There's a lot of like little itty bitty things. And uh, so sometimes I'm just like, yeah, I'll do that the next time. So this is where I, where I did most of my work here. I... I finished, I'm, I guess this is sea lead, right? I finished the top part along here, started to work my way down there. This, I believe, needed to be finished. I think I needed to do the letter and this symbol right here, or motif, I guess you want to call it. Uh, what I might do, so I am not stitching the clouds that you see. I'm going to stitch the sun and obviously the other words, but I'm not going to stitch the clouds because I really like, I love this fabric. and. It, if you look, it kind of looks like there is a little bit of stray kind of crap cloud there. So um, what I might do is at some point soon, oh, I need to show the middle more, uh, get to, I think, which side is the, I think it's this side. I'll do the sun and the words to kind of get that top. And I'll probably work and work down. I mean, this here will be full coverage, right? When we get to the water. And I think I'm changing out the mermaid. I did purchase the sea turtle. I'm not 100% sure if I'll do the sea turtle or some other sea creature because the turtle size-wise is might be just the amount of space. I'm not sure if it's too big or not, but I saw somebody do it and it was really cute. So um, I'm, 
I'm leaving that open to interpretation. And that might be why I continue around here and maybe leave some of that to the end to make my final choices there. But I think I'll do some of the center. I'm not going to do the entire border, most likely, and um, then go back to the center. Uh, we'll see. I mean, I say I'm going to do a certain thing, and then when the piece gets in front of me and I start stitching, sometimes it happens that way, sometimes it doesn't. I don't, I, I'm hoping I'm not the only one with that. I don't think so. I mean, I know other people have said that they don't always stick with their plans. You know, you have an idea of something you might do and then you change your plan up a little bit. So hopefully I am not alone in the fact that I can completely blow up all my plans at any given moment. <laughs> all right, so let me see, next piece. Okay, which folder is it in? Oh no. Oh, here we go. That's right, Whew. I thought I had just deleted all my photos. I am looking for, I'm not sure why it's not showing. It should be here somewhere. Oh, it's right in front of me. <laughs> if it's a snake, it would have bit you. <laughs> Just kind of ironic. <laughs> um, all right, so this, I finished up my rotation on this one. Uh, I do 10 day rotations on my full coverage. I'm rotating, I try to rotate like two at a time so that I can get more work done on them. This one here is Valentine 2024 Venus. It was a chart that was uh, put out for a very short period of time, free from Heaven and Earth Designs, who charted it, and the design was by Michelle Sayeta. And I did not add up. My goal with the when I start is to try to get like 1,500 stitches on a new full coverage. I'm sure there'll be some new starts again this year. I have hmm, probably 15 full coverages, but I just have fun with them. So I'm not really worried if I have more. This is where I finish up. I want to say, I think I have 18, 1900 stitches. So I almost hit 2000 on this one. 18 count white Ada, two strands over one full cross is how I stitch my full coverages. And I was asked actually, I think it was in last week's yeah, it was in last week's video. Uh, and I want to answer for everybody too, because, you know, sometimes these questions, other people may be wondering, right? And you just don't ask. Uh, somebody asked me if I had a special video to show how I do my full coverage pieces. And I don't, because I don't really have any mad, really innovative way to um, show you how I stitch. So like everything else, I stitch in hand, even full coverage. I don't use Every once in a while, I do have one of those, I, I had bought like a set of three of the Nourish hoops, you know, the different sizes. And every once in a while, if my fabric is really, really loose, I will stick a piece in the Nourish, but it's not my favorite way. I'm so used to manipulating the fabric myself by hand that I don't um, generally, I feel awkward when I do it. But I don't do any of the methods, to be honest with you. Because I stitch in hand, I can go anywhere on the pattern that I want. So I very often do. Uh, a lot of times I like to find the other borders. Now this piece is big. Now let me show you my fabric. So you can see finding the borders, it's easier on a mini because they're, <laughs> they're not as big. And I do like to find three of the four corners if I can. But as you can see, I did start to do, oh my goodness. I was stitching this, uh, Mo and I were watching something and, uh, I was stitching on this piece and he said to me, he's like, are you going to cut your fabric? It's very big. I said, uh, no, nope, because this is the size of my project. And I've stitched full coverage around him before. Maybe not, maybe more minis than this, but he was kind of, he was kind of floored by the size of my project. I'm like, yeah, I am doing this. So anyway, you may see me like go this way or come this way. I will sometimes pick a color and see what I can do and how much I can do of it within, you know, a strip. I don't count cross country or anything like that because I don't use gridded fabric. So, um, you know, I, I don't necessarily trust myself counting like a hundred squares over. I, um, I am one of those that count about six times if I do have to. So that's that's my version of gridded fabric is just a redundancy, doing counting over and over and over again kind of thing. Um, so sometimes I'll fill in a square, sometimes I won't. 
I, I just, it's just organized chaos, really. Kind of my life in some ways. Um, that's how my full coverage stitching really happens to be. So I'm sorry I don't have any really good answer, but that's about the extent of it. So this one will go away at this point now. Um, and I will just continue rotating. So far, what I've been doing is I've been rotating through my full coverages. I haven't repeated any of them yet this year. We'll see. I mean, if I come to one and I really am just not motivated to stitch on it, I might skip it for that rotation. But I would like to touch all of them. And they all should get a minimum of 1,000 to 1,500. I'm really hoping stitches. I'm hoping really that a lot of them get more than that, so, um, but we'll see. Now, this has been my 25-7 piece for the, I was going to say for the week. It's been so far for the month, but I'm going to put 25-7 away for the next three, four days. I'll talk about that in plans just for a little bit. So I've been working on, you get a set of three gnomes. I'm calling it St. Patrick's Gnome. I don't remember what it's called because I kind of, I took the picture from the Etsy listing to show you, but I kind of, took out all the, you know, the Etsy titles are not exactly helpful a lot of times. This is the one of the three that I'm stitching. So what I've been doing is I've been stitching for about 25 minutes a day ish. So sometimes what's nice is it changes colors, but there's blocks of color, which I am finding that unless I do monochromatic, which I adore, but if I'm going to be changing colors, I do like where there are like blocks so that I can get a strands worth. I'm finding more and more, um, you know, and I guess it's just style right now for me. If I have to stitch four stitches, change a color, stitch another five, change a color, and kind of keep going like that, I'm not loving those projects. And I have a couple, and there's a reason why you haven't seen them, because I feel like I kind of pass over them because I'm really not loving that kind of stitching. But we'll see. I mean, I do, I do still like the projects. It's just a matter of sitting down with them. But this one is nice because sometimes what I do is I just take two strands and I go through those two strands because they're nice blocks of color. And sometimes it's just one specific color. Sometimes it's a two. Uh, if there's a little bit of stitching, I might do three, uh, it, depending on the timing. It, it kind of works out usually 30 to 35 minutes, more than 25, but that's okay. So that's where it is. You can see I'm not going to stitch the back the background um, square. I'm also not gonna stitch the grounding circle. Uh, neither one of those am I gonna worry about. This fabric, oh, I love this fabric. I won this in a Friday night fight night. I don't know if I ever would have thought to buy it otherwise. This is 18 count, it's an opal, and it is Water Nymph by Be Stitch Me. And I just really, really like it. You know, I mean, it's perfect for St. Patrick's with the yellows and it's got like kind of the greens in there and the sparkle I just thought was fun. Think about it as like, you know, pot of gold rainbow kind of sparkly things. So yeah, so that's where I am. I continued filling in the blocks here. So you can see how they're nice little blocks of color. I did some here. There's a, there's a page break right here. I think last week I showed this. I said there's only four pages. I think there's actually six, but the, the five and six are small. And then I also rotated between, excuse me there, <laughs> trying to sit comfortably here, um, between this area and doing some here. So even with the 25-7, for example, one day I might stitch here, and then the next day I stitch here. I, I really don't have any type of like completion tenden tendencies where I have to have something completed before I go to another area. So that's where it is. Now, like I said, through the next three-ish days, at least the next couple, I'm not sure this will get any work on it. Although Sunday on St. Patrick's Day, I'll probably work on it. And then I don't know if it will continue to be my 25-7. I had thought about making it for all of March. We'll see next Monday how I'm feeling, if I, I want to continue working on it or if I would like to jump into something else on a daily basis. We'll see. Okay, this is another one. <laughs> I am determined to get it finished this year. I think, well, I know it was started in 2020. I don't remember when. I'd have to look at my book. Cinnamon Stars, and this is Plum Street Samplers. And I know so many of you are like, Laura, just finish it already. <laughs> well, you know I was stymied by the pumpkins. In the end, where is it? 
I ended up going with, I and I very rarely use uh, variegated floss if you're new. Most of the time I'm just a DMC sort of person. Uh, I did use Roxy Floss Co. And this is called, it's called Jack-O-Lantern. It's called Jack-O-Lantern. So I did end up using that. And uh, I think I, I really like it. I like the color. It matches the color scheme. And that was kind of what was holding me up was I needed to find colors that would match the color scheme of the project. And it kind of brightens up a little bit. I mean, if you look here and the DMC alternatives listed are things like 435 and 437. I mean, I didn't want brown pumpkins. So I really, really like how it worked out. So the pumpkins are all completed. Now, last time they weren't completed. They all have their stems. The scarecrow is almost completed. I think he just needs his face. And then I have just the corn, corn stalks here. And every single one of these, I think I need to stitch the center piece and that needs some work there. So there's little bits and pieces and that's where I'm gonna stall a little bit just because again, I'm gonna be stitching a little bit and then switching colors, but that's okay. I think I used everything called for DMC alternatives except for the pumpkins. This is an 18 count Honey, Honey Amber by Fabrics by Stephanie. And I did stitch Betsy's Autumn using the same color. And I just, I just love, I love the two of them on this color. I really do. I, Betsy is slightly more favorite of mine than this one. It's that tree. I love that tree. Uh, but I think this one's pretty. And I think the two of them will be nice side to side, side by side in kind of a collection sort of thing. So I don't, I don't necessarily guarantee that you'll see this again this month but it is on my radar for a 2024 finish. And I am gonna go back to my um, um, my book and see when I started it. I would really like, if I'm, I'm, if I'm slating some of these to be 2024 finishes, it'd be really nice to get them finished by their anniversary of when I started them. And I have this in Brie, who does not do floss tubes anymore, one year for my birthday, made this for me, and I absolutely adore it. So every time I have pieces with pumpkins, this is what the, the bag is that I'm gonna use. I don't have a lot of bags to show you, so <laughs> it's fun when I have one to show you. All right, oh, I was trying to swipe this off of the iPad and it's paper, it's not gonna work. So my full coverage that I think I had started last week because I, so I had recycled it, started the rotation on it. I am just really, really enjoying this one. And it is Mini Paris Morning. It is charted by Heaven and Earth Designs. And the artwork is by Uliana Babenko. And it's, it's at its 10 days. And I really think what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue trying to do about 100 stitches a day on it through the rest of the month. And then we'll see. But I just, every single day when I pull this to do some stitches on it, I love it. You know, I'm, I'm, I so enjoy sitting down and working on it that I just don't see why, why let it go at this point, right? I'm still going to rotate the, the second full coverage for a 10 day rotation. So you are going to see one more full coverage. Once I stopped Valentine Venus, excuse me. I started another one in the rotation. So ideally, if I was giving this one a stop, then I would start a new one along, you know, kind of keep rotating. But I just, I really do like this one a lot. So it's gonna get a little bit extra time. I've done well with it. I mean, it's nowhere near a finish. I mean, let's, let's not get crazy, but that's the full. And I did make it down to the corner. So it's a mini. So it's marginally smaller than the regular sizes, right? Um, same as the other 18 count white eight of two strands over one full cross. So I'll keep it up here for a minute. I did, this is the bottom. And, and this, is a, this is a really good example. Working on this this week was just all over the place. And so it'll show you that I really, I never, I don't have plans. I don't have a plan, a plan, I should say, with my full coverages. It's just very whatever the word wanted to be, kind of let's just flow with things and see where it comes. I did want to get to the bottom because I did want it. So you see, I gave myself plenty, obviously. Um, 
it's one of the few things full coverage that I do give pretty good margins. Um, and I, you know, I came down here and I did some other the colors with it. I just figured let's, let's hang out down here and do some purples. Now, before I had gotten down to the bottom, I know there's like this random block of color. I was thinking at the time, cause as you were coming down, you know, it kind of feeds in more colors. So <laughs> I was thinking, oh, I'll start here and then work my way. But obviously I never would have gotten down here in the course of a week by doing that. So I had done this block of pinks and then I said, okay, let's stop that and let's come back down here. I have been periodically pulling and that's why sometimes you'll see, I think that's part of, oh, uh, it's more purples up here because you've got the edges of the door. But every, I've been trying to fill in some of the confetti. So there's some purples. Maybe I picked a pink and then I saw it again here. Because if there's two or three stitches here, I'll do that. But then I still have thread left. And so I've been kind of finding where there might be some more and stitching that if I can. I mean, obviously, if it was smack dab in the middle, I wouldn't. And then I zoomed, I think it was last Friday night, and I did a good chunk, a good chunk of the sky. I have one little section left here, but there was quite a bit of this. I probably got a good, oh, let me see. Do I have my book here? Oh, right here. I can tell you on Friday how much I got done on that one during the Zoom. Um, <laughs> Friday, Mini Paris Morning, I got 460 stitches in while I Zoomed. So you can see, it, and it was all in that section. So I, and it was mostly all one color. So I didn't really have to do much. And so yesterday, for example, I was picking a blue here and then trying to figure out how to bring it down there. So I worked on pinks, blues, purples this week for the most part. Um, so yeah, so where I'll go <laughs> in this coming week, who knows? I think again, I will probably try to, you know, pick, I go back and forth. Like one day I'll just kind of plug away at a little bit of confetti and then another day I want a block of color. I mean, this will be good because this is good blocks over here. This side, the curtain's much bigger than this, but it's probably gonna look similar. So who knows? Who knows what we'll see next time around with this one of what kind of progress. Hopefully good mounts. All right, next. This one, I'm I'm not sure I can get finished in March, but I'm doing my best. This one is, and I'm not stressing about it, just putting that out there. Um, March is Daffodil. This will be part of a 12-part collection, you know, for the monthly. It was called the Garden Journal Series from Cottage Garden Samplings and I am working on all 12. And they were started previously, and now each month I've been going back and seeing what I can get done in that month. So here's March. And this, so what I tried to do with this one was, and you know how a lot of people are saying, let's break something up into 12 and then work on it, and then in the end of a year, you'll get it done. I'm not quite doing that because, I mean, there's not 12 parts of this anyway, but, and I only have a couple weeks of March left. But what I am doing is trying to find spots of things and say, I want to get that done and then I'll leave it for the week and then go to the next week. So this week I had set myself a goal of stitching all the words. So I got all the letters done and I actually did get, there's tiny little purple flowers here as well. So I just kind of did that as well. There are a few, I'm not sure if they're supposed to be wands or like flowers, just a stalk of a flower, maybe stalks of flowers in a down here, where is it? Under the word begins and then up here in this corner. I'm not gonna do either one of those because um, they just, I, they just kind of, again, there's too much there, you know what I mean? Like there's too much mi mixed in um, with all of the stuff that it's just a little bit too much. So um, I'll skip those. I don't know whether to get this side finished is like my next goal, or maybe I finish all the greenery. I have a few flowers left. We'll see. 18 count, did I say lilac mist, hand dyed by Rolanda. And I am using all the called for colors. So, well, DMC, there's a few DMCs, but then DMC alternatives as well. So you will see that one again. Um, and actually, Related to the number three, <laughs> March is the third month. Uh, thank you, Amy. Amy from Re Renewing Stitches. I said to her, I said, I don't know what to do for three. And she said, well, you're doing March. That's the third month. I said, well, there you go. 
Sometimes you just need to bounce things off of people. So um, I'm actually going to link Amy because I love her videos. And um, if you want to check her out, you can too. Um, so this will come out again specifically anyway for iSpy to get at least 200 more stitches in. And that will take care of that prompt. Sometimes the simplest things you just don't think of, right? Now, I had two new starts this week. Neat. Oh, no. One of them was originally in my plans. I am... I am... I'm, I'm starting way more things than I had planned this year. If you watch my video in December for Flossmas, you'll know that I had this great plan and I had all sorts of ideas of what I was going to do. And then things just keep jumping in. Now, this is not new. This next one is by far old. And um, I just said, you know, I need to get these done. But there is so much new stuff from stitch alongs and, you know, potentially market and just new things out there that I just keep starting things. So here I was thinking, oh, last past year my whip parade was 75 pieces. Let's see what I can do next year. I, we'll be lucky if I can tap it at 100 at the rate I'm going. Um, so I have stitched 10, 10 of these. I have March and April left. I decided, oh, let's see what I can do in the next month and a half to see if I can get April finished. April Cottage, Country Cottage Needleworks. So... And I actually, I did also pull this out. One of the prompts is stripes. And if you can see the house, the roof has stripes. So I am used, I did use that for that prompt. And here I am. This is, I, I kept true to form. When I started these, I really did a lot on vintage country, vintage country mocha. This is 18 count vintage country mocha. It's actually the backside. Funny story, I was going to stitch them all on the correct side, and I don't know, I think I started January wrong, I can't remember, I started one wrong, did it on the wrong side, I said, oh, it looks good, and then I just, I think there's one that's on this side, but most of them are on the back side, so I said, you know what, I'm just going to keep going with it, I only have March and April left, the April colors looked fine on this, so um, it's on the back side, <laughs> And am I, no, I was going to say, am I showing you the back? But there's not much to show there, but that's what I have. I did get my 200 stitches in though. So just going to plug away on this one. I don't know if it'll be a weekly thing or I'll just kind of pull it out here and there. As long as I have it finished by April, 2025, I'm okay. I mean, if it's great if it gets finished this year, but I'm not particularly beholden to a finish. Now this one, I meant to look at my master list from my whip parade and so that I could show you, or I could tell you what the fabric is. I know who the fabric dyer is, I just don't remember the color. Oh, and you know what? Let's look on this, there we go. This is, and this was picked, I pulled this out for, I think it was the Crafts and Books acrostic. This is Ireland and it is from Vlada X Stitch. They're on, Etsy and I think they have their own standalone standalone site as well. You can get uh, I think there's four like Ireland, Northern Ireland, England, Scotland. I don't remember. There's like a set you could get or you can get them singly. I'm not gonna stitch the word Ireland. Now I have been, if you look here, I have been waffling on the green because I'm not sure I love the green colors. And I had, I had committed, I was changing it. Then this week when I was working on it, I said, well, I don't know. And I did put in one green line of one of the greens. Mostly though, I finished up the blues and the clouds and so on and so forth. So I have water coming down this side, but then we have the greenery kind of like with cliff looking and at the very end we have some flowers. So I said, well, let me at least try it, put it in and see what I think. And I'm... Mm, I'm not loving it. So I do have some other ideas of colors to pull in instead. So I am going to, I'm going to do that. So I might, what I might do is I might leave that in and pick another section of the green and try and then look at them and see what I think. Now, I was gonna say, I know for sure this is a hand dyed by Rolanda, but now that I'm thinking about it, it's either hand dyed by Rolanda or 
to dye four fabrics. In the description box below, I put all of the information about the projects of like fabrics and if I make changes of colors and who the designer is and all that. So if you look down there, if you're interested in this color of fabric, I know it's an 18 count, but I now I'm second guessing myself if it, which, which of the two companies it is. It's one or the other. So all here, good, ready to go. We're gonna start changing maybe some other greens here and then kind of evaluate how I'm gonna take this next one. I don't have a specific ending date or anything like that with this. Let me just get done when it gets done. Now, this one is my second start of, excuse me, the week. And uh, I talked about this one and I wasn't sure what fabric I was gonna use. So I did make a decision. And this is Spring Awakens and it is from Summer House Stitch Works. I am stitching it monochromatic, and like um, Jardin Privé, which I'm gonna show you, because I have some full finishes, uh, like Jardin Privé, I am stitching one color of floss and changing out the fabrics. I'm gonna keep the seasons similar to the Jardin Privé, and they will be two different sets of collections in the scrapbook. So now, I learned a very valuable lesson as I was, cutting these down. So when I scrapbook, I iron them, I put interfacing on the back. That's what I tape to the cardstock or papers or whatever. Well, I didn't, there's two of them especially that I just wasn't careful with the straightening. And then when I put the interfacing on, they're a little kind of crooked-ish. And so I tried my best to try to keep things kind of straight and even. But if you look close, you'll see the margins are very wonky. And you know what? In the grand scheme of things, somebody look at looking at them, if they want to nitpick about the margins, then go for it. You know, that that's but the whole idea of these scrapbooks is not to, to nitpick, right? So they all have the same finish. And I'm not sure if I'm not sure exactly if I'm gonna do like spring, summer, or am I gonna put you'll see there's two with with um oh dates. So these are the two that are a little bit wonkier. So don't look too close, <laughs> but basically very simple. They're all the same size that I tried the best I could, obviously because of the wonkiness of the borders, they might be a little bit different. And then they're layered on a navy cardstock and then they're layered on a lighter, a lighter blue. So I wanted to kind of pull out, this was 823. So I wanted to pull out that color and really, you know, tie it all in using the navy cardstock. And then the lighter blue, it went with everything and I just thought it was nice. So spring is right here. So you're gonna see a, a lighter purple, not quite as bright for spring in the summer house works. And then same thing, you know, I'll use a lighter purple, uh, yellow for the summer. So that's spring and summer. And oh, I have a few little edges here that need to be snipped. We have autumn and winter. Now, this may be somewhat of a similar color because this is the least bright of all of my colors. I really didn't want like an orange on the autumn one. So um, this might be similar, but all the others are gonna be lighter versions of what, uh, what you see here. And so if you see, this one has a 2022 and this one says 2023. Because for the most part, I can't remember, did I completely finish them? 2023, I'm just gonna do this while I'm here. Um, if not, it was, I think it was. So I've got the start and finish dates of the, of the pieces. So I don't know if I want these two, but that would mean then the other two would be kind of their own pages. Unless I did winter, spring in one set and then these two, I don't know. I kind of like spring, summer autumn, um, winter next to each other. So we'll see. But I have four full finishes. So I can't remember, let me see, how many does that take? My goal this year is to try to get 55 full finishes of projects, because I turned 55 this year. And I am up to 12. So I am a little bit, if you were to say how many a month I would need, I would need more than that to get a finish, get to my 55, but uh, that's okay. Again, if it happens, it happens. I have you know, I mean, something like this is great because I had the whole set. I got four right away. Um, I have 
an ornamenty thing sort of that I did want to try to, but I keep changing my mind. So I didn't uh, fully finish that one yet. I'll just put these here. They're going to go in the, in the scrapbook. But, um, so anyway, so that is, this was, this is a long way to, to get to Spring Awakens. So that's the pink, right? I went much lighter. So let me show you. <laughs> this is one of those, you know, when people say, which way is it? It's, it's this way. So that's where I, uh, can you see? It's a very pale pink ish. If I go this way, see, that's the color. It's going to wash out. Let me see if I go this way. Will it show? Um, I am using 319 DMC Floche. So I've explained that in a few of my videos. It is a one stranded, a little bit thicker. I think it's still cotton. I'm not exactly sure why it was created or what exactly. Um, but it's really nice on 18 count. Do you see the, I feel like the coverage is fantastic. Now, this is a printed fabric. You can see it's white on the back. And <laughs> this is definitely not barely lime. But, you know, sometimes when they print these, they don't have. But on this side, it does say 18 count hush pink. And I'm almost sure that's what it is. I, It's fabric flare. I get mine from Dove Stitch. Dove Stitch has an Etsy shop and their standalone. So that's what it looks like. And I actually do have a yellow I have to see if I have enough. These are not huge. I mean, this is 118 by 88. So I think I do have a, a fabric flare, very pale yellow. So maybe because fabric flare definitely has a look to it, right? Um, so maybe I find then a very light peachy and a light blue and just do them all on the fabric flare. We'll see. But they'll be all done with the three, 319 flush. 319, right? Yeah. If it's not, I don't know where the label is. Oh, here it is. 319, yep. Um, it'll be in the description box though. But so that's what I have. That's my start. And I it, I like it. I am a big fan of monochromatic. If you haven't figured that out yet, I really do like it. I like to have the variety of projects that have changes in colors and differences and then just straight up one. And this is a great, like this would be a great car project. I actually did, when was it? Wednesday, I had a doctor's appointment. Wednesday, yeah, uh, afternoon. And so I got out a little bit before 2.30 and it was really nice. So I said, I'm gonna go down to the beach, down to the boardwalk. And I um, I had this in my car just in case. And I actually, cause I, you know, I was thinking, oh, I'll do car stitching. Well, I did get out at the boardwalk. Uh, I went main downtown area of Rehoboth, sat, you know, brought this, sat on a bench, it was nice. It was a little chilly down at the beach compared to inland, but um, it was funny because <laughs> there's a ice cream place and there's French fries. And you could see people were either sitting on the benches eating French fries or ice cream, <laughs> one or the other. <laughs> but um, I was just stitching. I, didn't, I was not going to put ice cream. Well, I wouldn't have that ice cream um, because it wasn't vegan, but um, I wasn't going to put French fry grease near this either. <laughs> But, uh, so I, I stitched a little bit on the boardwalk, got a little chilly, went in my car to the other end of the boardwalk and just say, sat in the car for a little bit and put in another couple strands. So yeah, super easy, one strand, um, nicely, it feels nice too. It, it's like a nice soft kind of feel to it. Okay, did I stitch this for I Spy? No, this must have been... Oh, this was for the magazine monthly across it. Did I do crafts and books as well? Oh, I didn't, which is funny because it was started for Beth's birthday. So this is Blue Rhapsody and it is from Rosewood Manor. And unlike many Rosewood Manors, it is only two colors, mostly one with accents of another one. And I started this back in December uh, to play around along with Beth, the steadfast stitcher, because she was having a birthday and she wanted, she said, pick a Rosewood Manor and stitch it along with her. And uh, I want to say, Beth, one of the two that she started was this one. I know Dorney Lane was one of them. And it might this one might have been the second one. Hashtag Rosewood Manor B-Day Sal. If you want to check out that, that uh, I was going to say stitch along, that hashtag or stitch along. So I'm just going to keep it folded because I don't have anything on the other side. Let me... So let me pull it back for a minute. 18 count Darling David 
from those missing stitches. I, oh, I love this. I love this. It is neutrally, but it's got kind of that fun little color. So I really like stitching on it. Uh, I did change. So this is, is it Weeks That Works? Yeah. Um, I did use, I'm using DMCs. I'm pretty sure the description box will tell you. I don't have it written anywhere here. Um, so I'm still plugging along on that butterfly. That's going to take me a while. And then every time I do one of these, I also do a letter. So I did the letter Q as well. I mean, I'm going to run out of elements or I'm going to run out of letters before I get to all the elements, but that's okay. So, and again, I'm not sure which way I'm going. I'm kind of, I started the A, B, then I started doing these letters and, and whatever. So, um, I was watching Sisters. Was I watching Cross Stitch the Globe or Hathaway Stitchers? I don't know. It was, I've watched both of them this week. They both had great videos. Um, I'll link them. Um, and it was, um, I just know I was watching Sisters. Globe and Hathaway. And they have good long videos, so you get some good good stitching time in. And this this was the piece that I really focused on during that uh watching. Was it with both of them? No, I don't think so. I think it was just one. So anyway, that's where I am. And uh, I did get my my 200 stitches for the prompt. My actually, if you look at the acrostic from magazine monthly, I've got them all filled in. I've actually I got all the prompts already done. I'm not done either with I Spy or Crafts and Books yet, but I'm getting there. There's Crafts and Books. There's K is the only letter I don't know what to do yet. So I'm still, I mean, I know you can do penalty stitches, but I have 75 projects-ish, right? So you'd think they'd be able to find something. <laughs> and you all are now going to start listing different things starting with the letter K. And I'm going to, I mean, and I know I could use this because it's a sampler and it does have the letter. But I try to kind of, if worse comes to worse, that's what I'm going to do. But I kind of like to, you know, not fall back on that if possible. So, so <laughs> you may see this again if I need it for the letter K. <laughs> Or I'm not sure if it'll it'll see any more time this month. Okay, I have two more. Told you I got a lot this week. And really, like I said, once I get through plans, it's quiet because that's everything I generally talk about a lot is stitching. <laughs> um what is where is this next one? This was my full coverage that I pulled out once I had put away. Oh, I need. No, it should be in here. Oh, here it is. Again, staring me up in the face. Once I put away Venus, um, I pulled out Mini Sunflower Cottage. It is charted by Heaven and Earth Designs. And it is, artwork is by um, Donna Gelsinger. And I have not seen her stitch it in a while, but Leanne, Small Town Stitches. I am 95% sure she is stitching this one as well. I think she's doing the mini. I don't remember 100%. But Leanne does a lot of really fun, fun full coverages. So, And she likes Donna Gelsinger quite a bit. She's quite a few Donna Gelsinger pieces. So um, that makes me feel comfortable saying I think she's doing this one. And that's what it'll look like eventually. I'm not there yet. <laughs> but hey, look, I'm getting... This is the width, so you can see it's it's longer, but again, not super long, but the width is narrow, so I am comfortably there. Um, what did I do? Again, a little bit of everything. I am pulling in some confetti colors, and then that's what takes me in other places, and you know, I mean, there's enough other places to go to that that, I mean, I went, I think, from here with this heart all the way over to up here, to be honest with you. Um, this side, I think there's some blue that will bring it down. So if one day I want to just do some border, I might come down on that side because there's more confetti on this side. This one, the confetti goes, doesn't start until later on down. So, so this one will get, did I, I didn't stitch on this one yesterday. I don't remember how many days it probably needs to go through next video at the least, if not a few days after that, I do 10 stitching days, not 10 calendar days. And I try to get at least a minimum of 100, if not closer to 150, if possible, on them when I stitch on them. So that's where it is. 
you'll see it again. Lots of fun colors. I love the brightness and, and fun, funness, I was going to say, not really a word, but um, I do love that one. Well, ask me that. Look at the confetti down here. Ask me if I'm loving it when I get down here. I think it's going to be beautiful once you do all the colors, but loving it might be a strong term at some point here. Okay, one last one. Is it digital? Oh, here it is. I used a different color fabric, so that faked me out. On Wednesday on my Facebook page, um, I had asked just, you know, general questions like, what's your oldest whip? No, I didn't ask that. I asked, what's the whip that you think is closest to a finish? That's the one I asked. And, you know, there's some beautiful projects people are doing. And some of them are close to a finish. I hope they I, I hope they come back and say they finished it. But mine, I think, I mean, I don't know 100%. This is digital, but I am using the paper version of it. So I count stitches as I go, but I don't know, like, the percentage or anything like that. I'm not that into math. Um nautical tear Erin Elizabeth you you know she's come out with some cute tears recently so it's just part of her whole tear series you knew I'd have to do something nautical this one is a little fiddly with the colors but it's small and I'm getting there I am I've been putting off the crab though because it the counting a little bit is fiddly down here is going to be easy I looked at that and that won't go too fat too uh, too bad there was no hope of me finishing it this week, um, I worked on it Wednesday. Oh, I don't, I can't, oh, here's the calendar. I worked on it Wednesday. I might've actually done a little bit on Tuesday as well. And that's what made me think about it to ask on Wednesday on the Facebook page. But this is 18 count compelling conscious. And it is from those missing stitches. I just love this blue. You're going to see something next week on this blue as well. And... I know I finished the entire bottom part of the tray. So it took me three rows, at least it was the longest one, to come up with the most economical time-wise way of stitching. And I was kind of like, oh, this is easy. If I could have figured that out on row number one, that would have been better. <laughs> Added a little bit more white here. Uh, I got the entire sandcastle, which was, the, the it's a good, easy pattern to read, but my eyes were kind of, kind of interchanging some of the symbols. So this sandcastle took me way longer than it needed to. And the end of the seagull, the seagull is completely finished as well. So I got some work done on it. I, I have the crab, he's sitting on a little bit of sand. And then I have the rest of the, you know, the pedestal of the tier, I guess is to call it. And then we just have shells there is a little bit of back stitching here or there not a lot though that won't take long and uh so once i get to that part that'll be a breeze by this summer hopefully this is a finish i mean really it only goes these are small i mean this is 18 count so i get that you know it's not 14 which would make it bigger but it's a cute little piece i don't know if i'd make this one actually a leaner instead of putting it in the scrapbook let's see i don't know so that's it. That is what I have worked on this week. And Mo's back now, so we'll see. <laughs> we'll see if I get it. I, well, I know I won't get as much done anymore because, you know, I was staying up later and, you know, I wasn't, I was kind of just relying on leftovers. I really wasn't cooking dinner and, you know, all that good stuff. So um, there'll be less stitching time now, but that's okay. I'm glad to have him back. So that's the trade off. It's worth it. Plans. Okay. So First off, um, I am not going to do categories this month. I decided I just wasn't feeling the letter E and uh, trying to find my projects. So I was looking at what was available for events in Whip Warriors. Whip Warriors is a closed group right now. It'll open again at the end of November. Um, but I know uh, if you watch Shady Trees, I'm going to link Lisa's uh, channel. Shady Trees stitchers, they will take a, different, a bunch of different groups and they'll take the prompts and games and stuff and they go through them. So you would know, for example, what this category letter and prompts are. And they encourage you, if you didn't get in, to play along anyway. So, um, But Riff Off is um, an event that um, basically, you know, kind of the idea of you're going to play one thing off of another. So the overriding, the first theme was fun. So you have to find a project that 
in some way or other says fun to you, right? And you can explain why. And then you find something in that project and tie it to a, a next project. And then something else, you can't repeat themes or prompts from one to the other and you can't repeat whips unless you've gone through all of your projects. There's no way. Uh, there's no way I could get all that, that much stitching done because you choose what your level of participation is and you know 100 stitches or an hour 200 stitches two hours or 500 stitches five I went with the 200 stitches so every 200 stitches then I'll rotate to the next and um it was fun I kind of went through none of the ones you saw this week so far are in the first say 10 I don't know if I'll get 10 done but um rotations so you'll see a bunch of different stuff next week and you might see a bunch of projects just because I'll be getting 200 and then I'm going to do the event through Sunday I think it goes through Tuesday but then next week I'll probably just start adding more stitches in some of the pieces you saw so that because otherwise I could have like 20 projects to show you uh, so that's fun and that will get me my participation requirement for this month and I just kind of, it's kind of like a whip frenzy but you do have to tie things in a little bit differently, um, but that's, it's kind of fun. I'm realizing I have a lot of beach and nautical themed. I know you're surprised, right? <laughs> um, so that's the plan for this weekend. And then on the first day of spring, let's see. Oh, oh, and I almost, oh boy, I have two starts coming up. Oh boy. I forgot about this one. On St. Patrick's Day, good thing I have the, my uh, thing here. Life Happens from Georgia Girl Stitching. When life happens, beer help, helps. So I need to find some fabric for that. All right. We, see, we've got more starts than planned. And then the first day of spring, I really wanted to start because I, I want to get the, the um, these last two balloons done. I have autumn and winter, right? So I need to do spring and summer. So this is spring. And I think I was going to start summer maybe. I don't know if it's going to be exactly the first day of summer or not. So I have this that I wanted to start. And I may pull out the fabric I used for autumn and see how it fits here. Like I might do, I'll pull the spring and summer or or the fall, the autumn and winter and see if I can repeat. If not, I might just do two different other colors. I really feel like something bluish as a background would look nice on this though. So we'll see. So those two, Sunday and then When's the first day of spring? I don't even know. Sometime next week. <laughs> There's that. So those two are plans. Um, who knew? There's an extra plan start there that I didn't realize. And then the other thing. The other thing was, this was Hathaway Stitcher's fault. <laughs> I know that for a fact because they're the ones that started this secret stitch along -y thing. So it's not, it's not like what your normal secret stitch along would be, right? I mean, it's not one that... You, like mystery or anything you know what you're stitching so the goal of it was to take this what is this called I have it here garden of zig from ink circles so you take this pattern you do not use called for fabric you do not use any of the called for flosses so you just change everything and you don't show it to anybody so if I stitched on this between now and May 31st that's the goal to get it done I will tell you, but I won't show you. It's supposed to be on May 31st. Everybody participating, and they've opened it up to anybody. And I just he said, you know what? I'd seen them talk about it. Allison and Stephanie from Cross the Globe, I'd heard them talk about it. And I just said, I, I've, this is a pretty piece. Let's see what I can do. That would be fun, you know? So I just, I had to jump on board <laughs> this week. And this is, this is my only shopping, by the way. So you see, I'm just combining plans and shopping right here. So, um, right? Yeah, that's it. That's my only shopping. Um, I'm uncertain. I can't tell you what my thoughts are, but I have multiple ideas of how to tackle this. So I need to figure it out because I need to start it if I'm going to get it, any hopes of finishing it by May 31st. So <laughs> that's part. That's my plans. Whether or not it'll get started this week, I'm not sure. What I might do is lay out some ideas and let it sit there, you know, and I can walk by those ideas for a few days or a week or whatever and see if something then really kind of comes to me. So we'll see. 
<laughs> I got to figure it out at some point. But yes, if you would like to stitch along and you want to check out Hathaway Stitchers, um, their link down below and you can, they talk about it in their videos as well as other people that might be participating. You'll hear about it. All right. So that's that. That is plans, shopping, all that. I did actually end up making a, um, order with some new stuff from market. I didn't pre-order anything and I kind of look through stuff and, and so on and so forth. And, um, it's not by means, like if I had a full comprehensive list, there was other things on there. But I just picked some stuff, things that I either want to start or I just love so much that I wanted to have, you know, in my, oh, if I feel like a start kind of pile. Um, so I will show you that when that comes. All right, so I do need to do a reminder. I have not heard from last giveaway when I picked a winner, we had... Minty green, 14 count opal, and a little piece of that, and some sea spray, kind of a minty chenille, right? Yeah, that's chenille. And Evelyn, Evelyn Barola. Evelyn, I've looked in all my spam areas and everything. If I've missed you, forgive me, please. But one more week, please, if you could get back to me. If I don't hear from you by the next time I film a video, then I will pick a new winner. So, Evelyn, I'd love to send it to you. Okay, so what I do with the, oh, there we go. This week, the giveaway to choose a name was, it's the Chubby Bird. It's so cute. From Jeanette Douglas. Be even cute just doing the little bird if you wanted to do a very small, although this whole piece is probably small. But if you wanted a tiny little piece, um, I asked you to say the word mauve and... The winner is Sally Deem. I'm going to go with Deem. Sally Deem, 93. I think that's a two. 9327. I don't think those are your numbers. Those are probably the. So, if Sally, if you could get back to me, and I apologize if I mispronounced your name. I had a couple of options of pronunciation, and I'm going with that one. All right, Sally. So, I'm going to put your name actually in the little plastic so that I don't lose that. And I'll get that out to you. All right, this week, um, I was uh, very, very uh, nicely gifted a bunch of patterns to keep, give away, do whatever I wanted. And this one, I just thought it'd be so fun to share with all of you. It's super cute. It's called Spring Trio, and it's from Annabella's. And you get three different pieces. And here, what do they show them? They show them as pillows. You could do them as pillows, as ornaments, as all that kind of stuff. So I thought it'd be fun to share those with you. It is charted. I'm looking at the back here on DMC. So stitch count looks like 60 by 60. Yeah, they're all six. They're all 60 by 60. So um, nice smalls. What are you going to say? So this one here says, I love you more than jelly beans. So we're going to use the word jelly, J-E-L-L-Y. So if you say the word jelly in your comment, then I will put your name <laughs> metaphorically in the blue bowl. And uh, I will pick a winner next time. So spring trio. All right. So that's it. That's all the stitching stuff. Uh, thank you so much if you don't care about life stuff. And I don't have a ton of life stuff, to be honest with you. So um, I'll see you next time if you are just heading off now. So life. So like you said, like I said, I was by myself for the course of the week. My tea is colder now, but I'm going to have a sip real quick. Oh, that's good. Um, Mo left first thing Monday and then he got home, rolled in about um, right before eight o'clock this morning. So he, he wanted to. If we come and, you know, if we leave, unless you leave at the middle of the night, basically, we don't do the George Washington Bridge from Connecticut down because that can be a disaster, right? But um, if there's a chance to leave early, and I think he left, he said he woke, he was supposed to, he was set the alarm for 3.30 and he woke up a little earlier. So it was like about 3.15 when he hit the road. Um, so he was able to sail through on the George Washington Bridge and skip having to kind of go out a ways because um, otherwise we'll do the Tappan Zee and the Garden State and all that. 
Um, but this way he was able to come straight down and he made really good time and, uh, you know, cause there's no traffic. And so now he's home and I know he's thrilled. I'm thrilled he's home. Um, I didn't sleep very well last night cause I knew he'd be traveling and I knew he'd be up in the middle of the night doing so. So, uh, I can relax now. Um, I'm trying to think if we did anything really interesting, that's probably a sign that we haven't because nothing is jumping out at me. Oh, I can look. Oh boy. I almost spilled my tea. <sighs> at least there's no stitching here. So if I did spill it, it wouldn't be the end of the world. Yeah, I don't think there was anything super exciting going on. I think because, you know, he knew he was traveling. On Sunday, he kind of chilled out and everything else. Um, I had a few doctor's appointments. The weather has been beautiful. It's supposed to be, I think it's supposed to be 70 today, but a little cloudier. Uh, and then it's going to get cold. Cold, cold, cold. Like freezing overnight temperatures. Um, my neighbors across, I can see them right here. So their house is sideways because there's a little bit of a road that's just like a little tiny little road right there. So I see the side of their house and they're really good with flowers and stuff. And so there's a whole row of daffodils within my eyesight right now. And they're so beautiful and vibrant, you know, beautiful yellows. And I'm hoping that they'll last for next week because again, the weather might give it a little bit of a challenge, but I don't know. We'll see. And then I don't know what's happening. I mean, it's getting towards the end of March. So one would think, right, that we would start getting temperatures a little bit better, hopefully. Fingers crossed. The rain kind of subsided, which is good because our grass was like a sponge. Uh, you squished when you walked on any of the grass. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, I'm, I think the weekend's supposed to be nice. I'm not sure what we have planned specifically. Um, I'm just going to take it as it comes. It's pretty much the way I've been taking 2024, to be honest with you. <laughs> Whichever, whatever comes up, whatever I'm doing, we're just going to take it like that. So that's about it. I can, you can see not a lot to talk about with life stuff, really. Oh, good. I, I had my scrapbook pages here. That would not have been good if I had spilled my tea. I just realized that. Um, yeah. So I plan on doing the riff off. I'm looking forward to kind of doing that. I like changing out the, the projects and seeing what I can get done. And 200, I find is a nice little, it's a nice chunk so that you get some, some things accomplished, um, but you feel like then, okay, now I can move on to something else and that's fun. So I hope you're well, I hope you're safe. Uh, remember, do something that will make you happy each and every day because you matter and you are important. And until next time, Happy stitching.